fully come. The Bible will let us know all the things that had to happen according to what God spoke through Jesus, what happened. After that happened, there was going to be something else to happen, and we're reading about it. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. We serve one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. Verse 2, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as fire, let the fire fall, and it sat upon each of them. I, I, I understand that you would have to been in oneness with those that were there to experience what happened. You could not have a separate mindset. You could not be thinking, well, this ain't my pastor. This ain't my church. That's those are the things that disqualify people from the blessings of God when you start trying to make your church, your pastor, your denomination like it's a gang or something. Well, we don't do that. Somebody just recently told me that when I shared my testimony concerning my fiance, because uh, I was just jokingly saying, yeah, God said I ordered a wife on Amazon. And she showed up. <laughs> and they was like, well, we don't do that over here. I was like, we don't do that over here. I'm like, you just basically separated yourself and made yourself something something else. And she knew it was a joke, but she was just saying that's, in other words, she was saying that's not what we do. And that's sometimes what, what, what people do in churches. They will say we, they will separate themselves from the body. You see my hands? My fingers are connected to where I can ball up a fist and make one fist on each hand. I'm connected. The body is connected. When you start using stuff like we don't, and you need to you need to check yourself because you saying that because you're doing something opposite of what the Bible preaches, or you're just so wrapped up, caught up, and tangled up in what a man is saying and the traditions of man that you've separated yourself from the body of Jesus Christ to follow a man and not the word of the living God. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven. As of a rush and mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat on each of them. Verse 4, excuse me. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. It's amazing how that one verse of scripture can cause so much division in the body of God. I've went, I've shared before how I went to a church. Me and a guy named Tim Crockett walked into a church in Columbus, Ohio, or I think it was Grove City, matter of fact. I don't even know why we was going there, but we walked in and we barely had two feet in the door, and the man on the pulpit was the pastor said, Ain't no yabba dabba doing in here. Excuse me. So he looked at us and discerned immediately that we must have the Holy Ghost and we must speak in other tongues. But he also let us know, ain't none of that in here. It is a scary thing to me. And that happened when I was young and and, and I, was, I, I wasn't I was as learned and mature in the word as I am now. It, 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 it's amazing how people will literally receive a vision, get a location, get a name, build or buy or move into a place they call a church and then totally make up their own set of rules and regulations according to what they want to do. But there are so many like that family. I hate to say it, but there are so many that reject exactly what I just read. Verse 4, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. I have people tell me to my face, I don't need the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost ain't this, the Holy Ghost. I, to my face. And I, I Can you show me that in the scripture? And let me say this, because I was meditating on this before I came online. I remember when I received the Holy Ghost and spoke in other tongues. It was around 1995 or 96, the Apostolic Faith Temple, 1634 East Main Street. You should know where you was born. And once I came back and surrendered myself to the Lord, um, I was going to church, but I wasn't surrendered. That's why I said, let the fire fall. You have to let the fire fall. When I wasn't surrendered, when I finally surrendered, I said, look, Sean, we're going to do this. We're going to do it all the way. I'm not going to hold back. I'm not going to come in here and pretend. I'm not going to come in here and act like I'm not really trying to serve God with all my heart, mind, body, and soul. 
So I got baptized. They baptized. I, I went through the prayer. We went through the prayer of confession. You know, uh, confess, repent, believe. You know, I went through that. The, then the minister took me and he asked me, he said, do you want to be baptized? I said, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm here for everything. I'm, I'm, I'm tired. My life ain't working. I want, I want everything God has for me. So after saying the prayer at the altar call, then they took me and prepared me to be baptized. I got baptized by some short deacons. I call them short deacons because I'm six foot seven. They were short. And so when they went to baptize me, I didn't think we went back far enough. I thought my head was going to hit the steps. So we went back a couple steps and they dipped me in the water. I got baptized. My head didn't hit. And then they said, would you like to tarry for the Holy Spirit? And I'm sitting here like, you know, I don't understand what that is. So they shared with me some scriptures concerning what the Bible says concerning the Holy Spirit. And they had this room in the basement of the church where they tarried with people because they wanted to be private. They, they didn't want me to be distracted by the, you know, or anybody else to be distracted by me being tarried, tarried for the Holy Spirit. So we went in this room downstairs in the basement. And anybody who went to Apostolic Faith Temple understand what I'm talking about. And just so happens, I was tearing for the Holy Spirit with my sister-in-law and her husband, Jerome Bostic and Linda Bostic, which is kind of historical for me because, you know, that it was unique. So I'm down there and I'm praying, I'm praying, and I'm praying, and I'm following the instructions of what they're telling me to do. And for some reason or another, Jerome felt led to leave the room. He left the room and then Linda was still tearing with me and I, I was tearing, tearing, tearing. And finally, I, I felt... What I was saying in English changed to a language I did not understand. And I feel led to share this, my experience with you, because so many people are afraid of receiving what God has for them because it's unknown. And I'll be the first. I wasn't afraid, but I did not know what was going to happen. I was just surrendered. I'm like, Lord, I don't fully understand what's about to happen to me by way of this experience, but I want everything you have for me. And I believe that's what needs to happen to so many people who have simply rejected or, or, or who have not sought after what the Bible is speaking about, which we call the Holy Ghost. Now, we'll be observing Pentecost on this upcoming Sabbath. Now, if you go to church on Sunday, that's your business. I would employ you, I would challenge you to attempt to receive what the Bible says. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost and begin to speak in other tongues. Go to the altar. Tell the minister, the preacher, I want the Holy Ghost evidenced by speaking in other tongues. I'm challenging anybody and everybody who's watching this who have never spoken other tongues to, to, to this Pentecost, 2022. There's no greater time than right now. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 3.1, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. This is the time, family, and I'm going to explain to you in a second by way of scripture one of the many reasons why you need the Holy Ghost. So back to four again, I want you to understand it. And if, you, if, you're, if you're really going to take this serious and you really want God to, 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 to allow you to understand that the, the Holy Ghost lives in you and you can't speak in other tongues, listen to the scripture. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and, sp and, sp and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So I want you to start, this is what I want you to do. And I, I believe some people are going to sincerely do this because they understand the need of it and they hear the Holy Spirit speaking to them as I speak to them. Um, start reading every scripture you can concerning the purpose and reason and season of the Holy Ghost. Just, just go to gotquestions.com, I mean, excuse me, .org. Go to gotquestions.org, punch in the Holy Ghost or King James Version online or the Bible and you, online and type in the Holy Ghost, and start reading the operation of the Holy Ghost through people throughout the Bible, and you'll understand perfectly why you need and why it's so beneficial for you to have the Holy Ghost. Go to John chapter 14, which will be our final scripture. I just want to at least leave you with one scripture as to why I know for a fact that you need the Holy Ghost evidenced by speaking in other tongues. And that's what Pentecost was all about. In the Old Testament, for a foreshadow, Moses gave the law, the tablets, the law, and that gave the Israelites and all the people that left Egypt with the Israelites the freedom to go into the earth and take dominion and speak those things that are not as old, though they are. They, 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 they had a covenant relationship with Almighty God, a God they did not know. And that sealed their relationship and gave them a liberty to go. That's the way the power of the Holy Spirit is. It will direct you, lead you, guide you, and give you everything you need to know and do in Christ Jesus. So in John, the Gospel according to John, Chapter 14, 
verses 23 is where we're going to start. Jesus answered and said unto him, If any man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Verses 24. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings. It's just that simple. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. Verse 25. These things have I spoke, spoken unto you, being yet present with you. Verses 26. I want you to hear this exclusively. And you can start with this scripture in your study and preparing to receive the Holy Spirit. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. If you've ever been a person that was intimidated by the Bible and felt like you can't understand what, what the Bible is saying to you, it is because you need the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost will teach you. It says, The Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So if you're a person who just heard me preach or teach or share this, this lesson with you and you do not have the Holy Ghost evidenced by speaking other tongues, this is an opportunity and a chance for you to do so. We will be praying diligently from this time until uh, the observance of Pentecost, which will be around June 4th and 5th, for you to receive the Holy Ghost evidenced by speaking in other tongues. Don't make it strange. Don't make it word weird. Just make it a thing of, of obedience. I know a whole lot of people who don't, who do not have the Holy Ghost evidenced by speaking in other tongues. And don't make it, don't feel bad because you don't. Just, just, it's a free gift. Let the fire fall. Just open yourself up and receive what God has for you. And don't make it about your church, your pastor, your denomination. Don't make it about anything but Jesus. That's where we lose. That's where we lose. We start making things about things it was never supposed to be about. Jesus saved you. Period. It's, now, I'm, it's, it's awesome to have a church, a pastor, an apostle, a teacher, all these things. But don't put them above. I heard my brother preaching before I came on and started preaching. Don't put anything above him. Make him the highest thing that you're, you're, you're striving for. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for all the things we've seen, heard, and done, Lord Jesus, in this time that we've been together. I pray, Father God, and I believe that there's somebody out there who sincerely loves you enough to want everything you have to offer to them. I know by way of example, we hear people say, something told me, or I heard a voice, or whatever the case may be. We know that it's the Holy Ghost directed people to do, then this is something that we can abide and have and flow in all the times. There's not a time that we can live this life where the Holy Spirit cannot direct us. I'm talking about practical things. Tell us how to dress, tell us where we should go, tell us how we should conduct ourselves to receive your promises, to, to, to show us the way of righteousness and holiness, Father God. There, you, that's what you, you gave it to us for. I hear also in the scripture where the Bible says, forget not his benefits. This is uh, the, the, one of the greatest benefits other than Jesus Christ and divine salvation that we can operate in and have is, this, is the Holy Spirit. The, the world has turned and, the, and some, some, some backwards teaching has turned the Holy Ghost into a negative thing. And how could anything from you be negative, Father God? I just pray, Father God, for those who will receive the Holy Spirit during this time and season be filled, speak in other tongues, and, and continue to speak. I know some people receive the Holy Ghost and, and they never pray in the Spirit ever again. You need to continue to speak in the Holy Spirit, especially when you're in your prayer closet and you're praying. It makes intercession for you. I thank you once again, Father God, in this time and this season. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Hallelujah and amen. May God bless you. And heaven's face continually always smile upon you. Oh!